Sí, escucho. Sí. Ok. All right. I will share my screen now. Just a minute, please. Just a minute, please. Can you see the screen? Yes. I'm going to speak in Portuguese because it is easier for me to express myself. This proposal, the purpose of this proposal, is to clarify in the policy manual text that the leases are not accepted in the current policies. The lease of resources is not allowed. Today, I will summarize this. LACNIC's current policies don't consider acceptable to lease resources as a justification of the need unless there is a connectivity service associated to that typical model that we have, a model in which the provider gives small blocks to the clients to provide internet connectivity. One of the very important things to clarify on this proposal is that this only specifies this in the policy manual. Therefore, regardless of reaching consensus or not, leasing IP addresses is not a valid justification of the need. We don't wish to change what already exists. What we want to do is to simplify this in the policy manual. One of the major motivations for submitting this proposal is that, unfortunately, even today, there is a growing number of people who practice this activity, which is contrary to the policy manual. Some might be doing this uh, unaware of this. And they might not think that this is not allowed according to the current policies. Maybe in a scenario where there is IPv4 scarcity, I might understand. that with a real justification, they might continue to do so, even though this might be against the policies. So can you see my screen? Can you follow my slides? We just see the slide that says justification one. Yes, we can hear you. I think you skipped one, justification one. So let us go on. Today, internet resources are delegated and are not a property. These are resources, and the intention is to provide connectivity to the clients, connectivity based on the justification of the need. So these addresses are not an asset that can be used for business, for leasing, or temporary loan. Therefore, when this need ceases to exist for whatever reason, the correct thing would be to return the addresses to the RIR. The other option is to do a resource transfer to the, those who really need it and can justify it. If the lease 
uh, addresses were to be authorized, the original spirit of the policies would change, even the existence of the RIR, which then ceased to have importance. And if the link between connectivity and addresses would cease to exist, then this would affect security, the security that the resources will be used for a purpose that is not exactly that those of the owner of the resources. Therefore, those who receive this no longer have the physical control over these addresses and filtering, etc. So as to clarify this and so that there are no more doubts, we have to spell this out in the policy manual, namely that the addresses should not be leased but rather should include a set of services. It's not just leasing the addresses. These changes are done taking into account the existing manuals, uh, the existing text in the policy manual. The idea is to do some adjustments. As you, if you are aware, IP assignment is done through an annual license. So these are renewed automatically, provided the justification remains valid and the use of the resources is in line with the current policy. This is the full text. I'm not going to read it out. On the left, we have the current text where we highlight the resource assignment with the validity for one year. So these are still valid at the moment of renewal if the policies are still complied with. The IP blocks should not be considered a property. This should be clear in the new text. We maintain this one-year validity, provided they comply with the requirements of the policy in force and should not be considered property. So the justification implies connecting directly to the client. So these are the acceptable justifications. Therefore, leasing. Uh, nobody can request an IP block in order to lease it to another ASN. Even in those cases, it is important to quote that it is not enough to have a connectivity IP service if the client uses these resources to announce with its own SN. This would not be valid because that organization would be using the resources as if it were the owner, the holder. So it has a capacity to receive the resources directly from LACNIC, whether rather through an initial assignment or through a transfer. We therefore have to be cautious in the sense of not confusing the resources announced by another ESN and those used by a different organization, as if these had been received directly from LACNIC. In the other RIRs, address leasing is not authorized and is not accepted as a justification in the policy manuals. This is not accepted as a justification for the need. In RIPE, nothing is mentioned on this topic. We also consulted other RIRs, such as APNIC and AFRINIC. The staff confirmed that it is not considered licit to lease addresses. In ARIN, this leasing is not justified, although there, there is a sort of a gray area in which after having assigned the addresses, they don't apply sanctions. But there is now a proposal in that regard. Now. To clarify this, this is 
not contained in the current proposal, but I'm including it here because I'm presenting it in Portuguese and there might be some doubts for some. The term leasing, if in Spanish, it might sound as if it were a loan too, but in Portuguese, a lease is with or without remuneration. It cannot be rented, it cannot be, it cannot be leased, it cannot be loaned. This does not justify the use. This is the first part of the presentation. We'll now see the impact analysis, and after that, I'd like to comment on the impact analysis and respond to any questions. The author of this proposal state, states that uh, in the agenda of the event, uh, it's also in Spanish, the Spanish version, just in case you want to read it in Spanish. Fernando, thank you. We now invite Mariela Rocha of uh, the staff of LACNIC. She will present uh, the impact analysis. Thank you. So the the last impact analysis today, we have five comments by the staff. I, I'm going to go slow with, with each of one of them. I'm going to emphasize the most important part. The first comment that we consider to that including annually the justification of the need has a high impact on the verification that each of the more than 12,000 members must perform. That is why we assume that it wasn't the intention of the authors to write the justification of the uh, need to, to have to check again to why, when you are renewing the annual license. I assume, we assume that that was not the intention. The second comment is that with regard to the justification of the proposal proper, there are several concepts that we consider to be wrong or statements that are, have nothing to do with the problem that to be solved. So we won't discuss those specific issues in this uh, justification. The third comment has to do with the justification of the need in paragraph three of the proposal. We want to say that this not necessarily is, is it the same throughout time, but still it is legitimate. The fourth comment is that we assume that the scope of the proposal is for the IP addresses with a service agreement with LACNIC or some of the RIRs and not for the legacy uh, IPs that are transferred from other RIRs. And the last comment is that if this proposal becomes a policy. If it's approved and it turns into a policy, it will be up to the staff and the board to evaluate the proper mechanism for implementation. And of course, you will be told the approximate date of implementation in the list, the usual thing. Our recommendation is only one. We recommend something respect uh, the justification of the need that appears in paragraph one. And as we mentioned in the first comment, the first of the five that I just mentioned, we suggest to delete the text where it says, and especially the justification of need, when speaking of renewal. What's the impact that this has on the registry systems and other systems? It implies um, updating the policy manual and uh, a proper uh, mechanism for the implementation of uh, the operations of the RIR. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mariela. Okay. So let's start. A second, please. Tomas. Yes. 
Fernando. Yes, I want to make some clarifications. Okay, let me say quickly, just to clarify, as to the first item in the impact analysis, it was absolutely not our intention for LACNIC to have to revalidate all the justifications on an annual basis by no means. Did we propose anything in that regard? The proposal doesn't say that the staff should check those things, given that the rental of IP addresses is not valid then it is not there is no need to go back to revalidate situations where there are enough uh, uh, indicators justifying that it continues to be valid as it will be for the renewal of the annual license if not, it is assumed that the justification continues to be valid unless there is something that makes you doubt that that was the case. As to the third item about the justification that may change with time, it may continue to be valid. And the current policies indicate the need to justify this as a leasing. So as I pointed out previously, if an organization justified properly, but then the uh, company changes and uh, they liquidated the network instead of, re of uh, transferring the resources as foreseen in the policy manual, they decide to rent them, that would no longer be a valid use. It is not consistent with the policy manual. So that license of usage should not be uh, uh, renewed in those blocks. Likewise, if the organization requests a block, either a new um, organization, initial block in the waiting list or for a transfer and justify what they want that what they want to do is to lend them or to rent them, it wouldn't be right to accept them. And in addition, the scope of the proposal, we consider that all those that sign a contract of delivery of service with LACNIC are subject to this policy. There are no discrimination as to the origin of resources. So once the, the resources belong to LACNIC and they are assigned to the holders of the resources, or if it comes through an interior transfer or any other holder of a legacy products and is registered at LACNIC, it is will now be included in uh, the service contract agreement of LACNIC and subject to the same rules. And if this policy were to transform to a policy, it's up to LACNIC how to implement the proposal. Because the proposal won't give operational uh, details. We only want to clarify in uh, the policy manual so that it will be very clear that renting the resources is not considered a valid justification and non possibilities. That's all. So now we start the discussion time. So we invite you to share your doubts, opinions, or comments. Those of you in Zoom, you can raise your hand or in the Q&A uh, uh, feature, not in the chat, in the Q&A. Um, that is in the lower and the bottom of the uh, Zoom. And here in the uh, room, you can come to the microphone. You have two minutes to ask a question, and the author may respond it in three. You may also raise your hands in Zoom. Wesley. Wesley Correa. Um, thank you for the proposal, Fernando. Now, I have some doubts, and I'd like to understand further. I want to believe that the problem that needs to be solved would be the renting the uh, resources, the number of resources. So if we 
put, as it says here in paragraph one, we put the need to really justify that the ISP or the holder of resources needs these resources annually for renewal of membership. I think that's a bit complicated as well so because as we analyze with the impact, it will really make things very complicated for LACNIC. And I have another question based on the proposal, now the policy proposal. In the case, for instance, if there is a complaint and there um, any problems, how does uh, how do you, how should LACNIC operate as law enforcement, as the police, uh, or as a toy that you so how does the author suggest that LACNIC should go about it? Thank you. Fernando? Yes, thank you. Well, thank you, Wesley. Thank you for your questions. The first question as to the need for justification, as I said, it doesn't change anything of the existing today. No new procedures will be created, and LACNIC won't have to conduct any uh, random assessments of the needs or request any further documentation. If there are no uh, suspicions or indications that uh, LACNIC would consider necessary to request the justification, there is no need to do it. The purpose of the proposal is just to uh, clearly state that renting addresses that belong to an organization in an autonomous system that may receive those uh, assignments directly by LACNIC should not receive them from another organization that no longer uh, use those resources. It's different from the cases in which there's a typical internet supply provider that is assigning small blocks for uh, just a, a slash 27, slash 28 for the other companies. It's not the same thing because in that case, it, the, the, the company is doing what uh, the same explanation with, with which they obtain the block. So nothing new will be created. And the second item, I forgot it. I forgot. If there is a clear evidence that the person with the resources is uh, uh, either renting or um, or uh, charging for them, what should they do? Well, exactly the same as LACNIC and the NIRS will do it. They're going to evaluate based on their own criteria whether that information or those indications are enough to justify that LACNIC may request uh, that the holder of the resources should uh, justify their need. And uh, if the justification continues to be valid, as had been uh, as uh, consistent with what they had been assigned uh, initially and uh, consistent with the current manual. So it's up to LACNIC to decide whether they're going to start a process to request the return or not. Franco, are there any hands in the Q&A? Yes, one by Ricardo Patara, against. I understand the idea, and I share the concern. As of today, I don't think the text is necessary because the NIRS, NIRS, and LACNIC already do something about it. Now, there is an obligation to check all the requests. The problem, Ricardo, is that that is not well explained. It's not well stated. It's not explicit in the text. It's confusing, so it... Uh, uh, there's room for confusion, if, and so pe some people may interpret that uh, renting IP addresses could be possible, so I think it's a good thing to include that in the text very clearly. That could help LACNIC and the NIRs if the case goes to court to very clearly state and to leave no room for doubts so that if that ends up in court, LACNIC and the NIRs may succeed in winning the case, stating that that is not uh, permitted, that the policies don't permit it. 
So our intention is not to change the sense, but rather to clarify this so as not to leave room for doubt in a at a time where there is a scarcity of IPv4, and this has motivated people to carry out these practices. I see that the in the proposal, in the current text, 2321 and 441, and in the new text, you don't include anything regarding these two points. So my doubt is regarding the types of changes you're doing to the current text. I understand that no changes are being made there. In your explanation, somehow you prevent from adopting that policy because you yourself question the definition of the term lease. For me, to lease something, this is a situation in which there is a monetary compensation. The way you explain it, this could also be a loan. I therefore see that there are some cases in which it is difficult to control this. You might receive something, and it can be validated in the ROA and validated by some autonomous system that has less preference than one, the one who learned it, learned, loaned it, but that would complicate things. Thank you, Pedro. Now, regarding the items in the current text and in the new text, we just rephrased the way it had been worded, but the meaning is the same. If it could be more specific regarding the current text, if you consider this should be maintained in the proposed text, then we can consider this this has been considered in one of the other points. We're going to submit a second version, but we are open to make any adjustments that are considered necessary in order to preserve parts of the current text that we thought we would change in order for the sake of clarity. Regarding the other point regarding leasing or loaning, this is just an issue of language. In Spanish, the word alquiler is understood as a use that is in return for payment. A loan is without payment in exchange. Now, what is a problem? Sometimes there might be some kind of relation, a commercial relation with companies that are close to one another, so they won't have a leasing contract for the addresses. They will receive it, but these are somehow on loan, and this should not be allowed because the resources are not there to be loaned to companies of the same economic group. The correct thing to do is to transfer these resources from one organization to another so it can use it for its own use and in order to connect with its clients. So one or the other situation are ultimately the same. But the important thing is that resources should be used by the holder of the resources whether in its internal infrastructure or to connect to its clients who have no other way of receiving the addresses directly from LACNIC. Now, if there's a lease contract or not, this is less important. But just to state that this would be not be valid in any of the cases. Franco, do we have any questions? Well, we have a participant, a remote participant with the hand raised, Jordi. I would like to add something as author and as member of the community, information that somehow responds to what Ricardo was saying and what Wesley was saying. Let me explain. We have approved a policy two or three years ago with section seven of the manual, which, al which already tells us that LACNIC has to verify that policies are complied with. In our proposal, we haven't included anything in the sense of verification of any kind, because this is already contained in the manual. Any non-compliance with the policies, whether continued or repeated, it might imply revoking these resources or return of the resources. Of course, opportunities are provided to correct the situation. So in no way was it our intention 
that this can be interpreted from the text. This is contained in a different part of the model. And we don't intend to say that as from now, LACNIC has to verify things whenever there is an annual renewal, but rather because of the manual, automatic procedures have to be in place to verify that the policies are being complied with. When does LACNIC implement these? Well, in section seven, this is doing phase by phase, being done phase by phase. I think it's not so complex to have an automatic procedure in place to determine whether the one who is announcing the resources is really a client of LACNIC's client, or if this is a different entity, and this would then show that there is a loan or a lease involved. I think this would respond to many other issues that have come up, and also because everything is in Portuguese, and now we are trying to put it in Spanish. Pedro. Fernando, the points you included in the current text are those of the original text. And you should include the changes in the new text. In the current text, you put item 3.2.1 and 4.4.1, unless I'm mistaken. And in the new text, there are no changes to those two items. Just that, those were my comments. So, Mr. Chair, uh, can I allow Jordi to explain this? We are just renumbering some of the points in the text. That is why we say omit and renumber the following sections. But the contents as such remain the same. Maybe Jordi could rapidly explain this. Well, what we're doing basically here is that there was a text that was 2321 in this section. One single paragraph explained that the IPv4 addresses were delegated addresses, and the IPv6 section explained exactly the same in several paragraphs with a more complex text, but for IPv6. So what we did now was to remove those paragraphs in the IPv4 section and IPv6, and we merged the text which from our standpoint encompasses the two texts that were there for IPv4 and for IPv6. The intention is not to change, remove, or include, but to modify the text. That is why we included this in part one of the manual, which, as I explained in the first policy proposal I made today, that we consider this already contains a mandate, and that is why we call these definitions and mandates. And now we come back to the discussion whether these should be sections or whatever. But this does not change the concept of this proposal. I don't know if this answers Pedro's concern. Thank you, Jordi. Before going on, Mariela, I would just like to clarify something regarding what was being said a while ago. We understand that when you speak of leasing, this involves payment. If there is no payment in exchange, then we speak about a different modality. One well, in order to, we should prevent the two situations from happening. I don't really agree with that. A rental could be for a zero fee. Leasing does not imply any thing, any payment in exchange. Maybe you can find a different word. A loan with value zero is like a leasing or a rental with zero value. We have something. Do you have anything in the Q&A? I have a comment. The way it is written, the RIRs or the NARs should assess all the situations. Uh, well. Ricardo, as I said in the presentation, it is not our intention. And if this is not clear in the text, please send the mail to the mailing list 
with the suggestion of the text, so Georgie and myself can analyze or figure out a way of spelling this out better in order to provide guarantee and security. Maybe that is not necessary, but we really want to spell out that we don't want to change the current way that LACNICs or the NIRs or RIRs do validation unless this is based on a report uh, or something that was reported and this would really be according to the criteria. I am the legal advisor of LACNIC and let me clarify something. The word comodato in Spanish he corrects himself, loan without a price. The legal term is comodato in Spanish. Let me clarify that. This is a civil code of the Uruguayan legislation, and I think that the majority of the civil codes in the region. Whatever way we are willing, open to say this, that no payment is received in exchange. someone uh, remotely. I also have a question for the, regarding the third paragraph. Well, Ricardo already spoke, and there's someone who's on the microphone who hasn't spoken yet. I apologize. Oscar Robles, I'm from LACNIC staff. Something that came up following the impact analysis, and we'd like to mention now, before this proposal advances, is the term leasing and rental not necessarily mean the same everywhere. So our suggestion is to standardize the terms to be sure what we are referring to. Thank you, Oscar. Ricardo Patara. Well, I have a question regarding the third paragraph. Therefore, it is not considered acceptable, nor there is a justification of rental unless these are part of services offered based on connectivity. And he highlights, quote, if these are not part of a service. His question states, are you saying that addresses are services? No, no, these are not services. Normally, the relation between an AS, ISP and the connectivity client, well, we should be thinking of a corporate client. It could be another an ISP with a, a, someone like an end user, and they have the LACNIC's assignment. In that case, there is a set based on connectivity, a set of services. Now, what we see in the cases of leases or rentals is that two different ASNs that have no commercial relationship whatsoever, none provide services to one another, and the only relationship is that one leases IPv4 blocks from the other, or to the other, rather, so that they can announce with their own ASN and have the capacity of receiving that block directly from LACNIC, whether through a transfer or an assignment. But I would like to say that normally you expect direct connectivity if this direct connectivity does not exist between the businesses. Well, this is a strong indication that there is a violation of the policies in the case where you have resource leasing, which is not allowed. Uh, there was an interruption while you were speaking, Ricardo. I will try to say the same and try to be clearer. The legal term of a loan or a rental without payment in exchange, you lend your bike to a friend, that is what we call comodato in Spanish. This is stated in the Uruguayan code, and this is relevant for LACNIC because this is where we have the headquarters. But the majority of the civil codes follow a French model which has extended throughout the entire region. I would be 100 percent sure that this is the same concept throughout the region.
Nobody else is requesting the floor, Franco. Any other uh, questions in the Q&A? Nothing here. All right. So I go back to my script. Well, I don't know whether there will be any other comments, but if there are not, let me uh, add a, a final comment. OK. If there are no further comments or questions, I'd like to make a final clarification. Thank you. So, wrapping up, I'd just like to reinforce the intention to leave in the policy manual something very clear, something that is not allowed anymore, and what in, in those who are not in favor of the proposal think that the final aim is to enforce something that we understand that is positive for the entire community that guaranteeing ensuring that the resources are go fairly and uh, uh, justly to those that have the need not necessarily those who can pay more. It wouldn't be fair for certain organizations to have more and more IP addresses assigned um, um, just because uh, they want to um, do business with them while uh, to rent them, while other organizations have strong um, uh, justifications and they don't have access to those addresses. So we want the situation to be fairer. If there's a justification of an organization to receive a certain block, then you can use the transfers and do it following the policies, but not through renting. And finally, to finish this uh, presentation, I'd quickly uh, like to ask to thank Ariel Weicher for his time chairing these sessions, his uh, uh, work, and how patient he is and how neutral he is in the PDP when chairing the PDP activities. Thank you, Ariel, for being so useful to the community. Well, you told me that you wanted me to give him a kiss for you. OK. Fernando, thank you for sharing your views. There's a hand raised. Franco, yes, sure. The last one, go ahead. It's Jordi. I have a comment. I, I, I looked for the word in Spanish, comodato. I understood it now. I think it would be good to have an update of the impact analysis explaining these uh, terms so that in a new version we may consider it. In my view, it continues to be the equivalent, at least what I found these few minutes, leasing and renting would be synonymous. And I continue to find legal information that tells me that there can be a leasing with no payment. So it would be very good to clarify it before we draft the new version. Oscar? Well, according to the Spanish, uh, to the Royal Spanish uh, uh, Dictionary, the leasing is a rent, but with the possibility of finally purchasing the object or the product. So it wouldn't be the same as a rent. Well, I'm sorry, I have no more primes, prices. Well, I thank you for your opinion, the comments, definitions. Now, let's now m measure the temperature in the room so that we can uh, take into account when measuring consensus. We remind you again that even if the Zoom says that it's a poll, we don't do that. We probe. Uh, the result of the doesn't mean that uh, a proposal will go to consensus. The consensus is evaluated based on the comments here and in the Q&A and those who have raised their hands and the mailing list. By no means, 
should the temperature be uh, construed as uh, voting. So together with the staff of La Clinique, let's um, uh, see the probe in the room. Those in favor of the proposal, please raise your hands. Thank you. Those of you against the proposal, raise your hands. Can the staff let me know once they've uh, they're done with the count and abstentions? Raise your hands. All right, well, thank you, everyone. The proposal, LAC 2022-2, version 1, clarification of uh, the rent of resources is not accepted in the current uh, policies. Will uh, the eight weeks will uh, be um, completed on May the 30th, 2022. So after that, we will let the community know whether there's consensus. So we invite you to send mails to continue with the discussion in the policy list. Thank you, Fernando and Jordi. Thank you.